Go for it, Peter. It's your turn. Okay. So, hi. I'm Peter Powers. I'm a broker from Toronto, Ontario. And um, I met Gia and Paul. I was watching their videos for about a year before I, I came down here. And I met them, having lunch with them. Amazing people. Um, not to show up, but it would give you an idea into the sort of experience and background I have. Uh, my best year, I sold 53 homes. I've had uh, top 10% Canada-wide, top 1% uh, for listings in Toronto. Um, Diamond, Platinum, Gold, Silver, Bronze Award, Gardner Award. Um, I've gotten the awards that show that I do the volume and I have the experience to maintain that kind of volume and that kind of success. So, in Toronto, there's a certain level of professionalism, a certain level of legal shielding, contractual shielding, and protection from your representative. And this is our uh, third lunch or third third table we're sitting down at talking and I'm thinking that what would really be good is if I started a series about somebody who after 33 years in Toronto uh, licensed in 1988 is now coming here and seeing how it's the Wild West and if you don't have the right person shielding you, protecting you, if you don't have that network that they bring in of the lawyers that look after you, the accountants, everything, home inspectors, everything that looks after you, um, you could really get burnt in this country. You could really flounder. So uh, with fresh eyes, I'm asking them about things that I took for granted in Toronto. Like, you don't have to ask this thing. This is always taken care of in a transaction. Here, if you are not focused on it, Right now, I'm just surprised at the pits that uh, are on the path, the landmines that you can step on, that in Toronto, you don't even have to worry about. You are, it's, it's just taken for granted. Nothing can be taken for granted here. So let me ask you this, uh, Peter, uh, and thanks for talking uh, and taking time off your lunch. Keep on eating, and uh, <laughs> I'll ask you this question. One of the things that uh, you were talking about is the pitfalls, uh, and you made a, a, a statement about uh, this person buying a car, which is a, a pitfall in itself. So use that as your scenario of some of the things that could happen when it shouldn't happen if you had, let's say, a somebody that helps you buying a car. Because, you know... Okay. I think everybody is saying to themselves, you know, we don't need an agent, okay? Everybody on Facebook is saying, go with the taxi driver, go with this person, go with that person. But why, since you are coming from the same background we are, why do you think it is so important to do get your representation, even if you're doing a buying, meaning to have a buyer representative, to look at the properties that are available? Okay, two examples. One, you may be looking for acreage where maybe you want to buy three acres to put a house on in a nice area that you want to build on. And you've made really good friends with a taxi driver or the groundskeeper of the house that you're renting. And they know where the acreage is. And what is very common here is you could, there's what's known as the gringo price, you could be looking at acreage that should be worth no more than nineteen to twenty thousand dollars per acre. They're showing you at forty, telling you that you could probably pick it up for thirty or twenty-eight. And the groundskeeper has a deal with the owner whereby they split. The owner wants no less than twenty and they split anything above twenty. That is illegal in Toronto. That is flat out illegal. When that is uh, caught, uh, the money goes back to, first of all, anybody that's unlicensed is not allowed to deal in real estate. They're not even allowed to take uh, bird dog fees, finder's fees, and uh, that's not the case here. So you don't know what you're buying. Secondly, in that situation, if the title is encum has an encumbrance of any kind, um, it cannot be used for something. or it's 
been passed down in the family and it cannot be sold or it isn't perfectly severed, um, you're not going to know about that. And you might be directed to a lawyer. The lawyers here, uh, you know, in Toronto, lawyers get sued for making mistakes because they're doing high volume and they slip up here. Uh, so far, I've, I've, I've met a few lawyers and it's like they have less qualifications than all the courses that I took to become a broker. <laughs> And, and, and you're handling people's money in the purchase of a property. So, yeah, those are huge little landmines or pitfalls. The second example is with the car. Somebody will tell you about a used car that you can buy. Somebody will show you that used car. They'll show you paperwork that says that they are the owner. They will sell you the car. And this is a true story. Uh, when you get here, you learn about communities, you join those communities, they have Facebook pages, Telegram pages, and, you know, they, they meet at cafes, and everybody tells them, oh, that person got burnt, this is what happens, and we share scam stories so you can watch out for these things. And there's a scam here where you're going to buy a car, they're going to put you in, into a lawyer that's going to do it cheap, they're going to get you a mechanic that's going to take a look at it, car's going to have problems. Lawyer uh, is not going to tell you. A week and a half later, they got a knock on the door. I never sold you my car. The car was repossessed and they were actually charged for some of the damage that the car endured because it was falling apart during the time that they owned it. No, they never got their money back. Right. Right. And, you know, you take for granted that you're going to do a check whether it had accidents here in, in Toronto. You're going to do a check as to the ownership the you're going to have a, a mechanic uh, maybe a CAA approved mechanic or a mechanic that you know or a mechanic at a dealership for that specific model who's going to look for, out for the car that has no ties to the car you've got protections in Toronto that uh, make sure that the basic things can be taken for granted and you can move along in your purchase those basic things that you take for granted in Toronto do not exist here. Right. And if you don't have somebody who is, you know, an ex-surfer looking to pay their rent by now being a real estate agent and is basically a glorified chauffeur taking you from property to property that knows all these pitfalls, that can look out for them, that can shield you from step one to step two, you're in the wild at west, you may take an arrow or two. I have a, a two cents here. So with that said, um, yes, with the vehicle um, uh, scenario. scenario, that happens with real estate as well. But my the third point I wanted to add is that a lot of people say, oh, well, just go with the attorney. You don't need an agent. The attorney is not, does not know all the prices for real estate. They're not going to negotiate for you. They're just there to write up the legal documents to say, okay, you're buying the property. Let's look at the properties, the, the documents on the legal side. But they're not going to go with you to look at every property you're interested in. They're not going to um, represent you when you want to make an offer or, or um, tell you whether that's a good price or not. They're not an agent. Let the attorneys do the legal side of it and let the agents take care of the other part of it. Yeah, and but people will say right away that uh, we have a, a, a interest in it and therefore they should go to the owner direct. And we can talk about, you know, there are a lot of pitfalls, as we were talking to Peter, that they're not aware of. I mean, we can go through the whole list here, but, you know, it comes down to we can educate the public, but... You know, if they don't want to listen, that there's the not much you can do about sorry, it. The taxi driver is not going to tell you what it's worth, and they're not going to show you sales to back up what it's worth. And there are so many properties that I've looked at that are easily a hundred thousand dollars overpriced. There's no MLS here. You don't know how many days it's been on the market. You don't know how many times it's been relisted. You don't have other properties in the area that are similar Comparable. that you yourself, because you're bored at work, can pop up the realtor.ca 
and look at the Toronto MLS and do your own assessment of value because you can see what's been asking. Right. You don't know any of that. And if you go to the taxi driver or to the surfer friend who now can, you know, get you in contact with the owner, buyer beware. Yeah, true that, true that. Okay, guys, I really appreciate it. You finished your lunch. Uh, it was a great discussion. And we'll have another one on expectations. That will be our next video. Thank you, Peter. Great. Thanks, Peter.